Okay, so quick one. I just started refitting everything, and I've just realised that I haven't actually got the flywheel on, which is going to make it difficult for possibly getting the second piston in on this side because things might not line up. So I'm just in the process of I've just refitted this guard and fit in. I don't know what that is. That's something to do with the starter motor. It makes electric go somehow. That's all being fitted on, and then I'm going to be putting the flywheel back on. So I've got the chuck the key whatever that's called that's going to be sat in there this is going to slide on chuck will go in that little, and i'm going to screw it all down be nice and tight on this end i know that there'll be no movement that bottom of the crank then and i can quite easily get the second piston in um yeah i will take a video of getting the other piston in i had a bit of a ball like getting this one in and i'll explain a little bit later just another quick little one and then i'm going to try and set the camera up to put the other piston in. I've got the flywheel on now. Big nut around there is a 30mm nut. I've got this piston onto the crank now. Uh, that's the equivalent little bolts that go in here. These are 10mm. I'm just in the process of putting this piston together so I've just got it all on. I've just got to get the rings on and then we're going to have a look at putting it in. Um, Struggled with the first one because I presumed, here's my piston compressor or whatever you want to call it, I presumed that I'd be able to put all three on and compress it at once and then push it in and I was having a nightmare because they were popping out. So what I was doing is I was just putting it on for doing one ring at a time basically. Um, that's the only way I could find to do it. Um, you could probably get more expensive or better compressors than this one. This is just a bog standard one. I know that you can get ones that sort of taper down like a sort of a funnel. You can set it up and then you just knock it in. And, but, you know, I wasn't prepared to pay 65 quid just for that. Let's say the bore of this piston is 68 mil. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think I looked on eBay and places like that and it was about 65, 68 quid for a tapered one. So yeah, so I've gone with this and it's just a case of do one ring at a time. That, that's all that these seem to be able to do is compress one ring at a time. Just knock that in, second ring on, knock that in, third ring on, knock that in and then we're away. So uh, yeah, I'll look at setting the camera up and then fingers crossed it won't take too long. Okay, so I got the bottom part on which is... I think that's the oil ring or whatever it's called. Um, and as I say, right, so what we're going to do is there's a little mark on the top of the cylinder, so I know that that is going to point towards the flywheel. I've put a little bit of oil here, just a normal, simple engine oil in to lube it up. There's oil all around the cylinder. I'm just going to get it in here now, position it up. I'm going to get my clamp, which is over there. I'm going to fit it on nice and tight. I'm going to use the end of the handle of my um, mallet. And I'm just going to give it a little knock to get that one in. I'm then going to put the second ring on. Do exactly the same. Third ring on. She should be in there. And then it's a case of line up the bottom of the con rod onto the crank. Put this section on. Hopefully we're home dry. Okay, so she is. Two con rods on. I put the caps on the bottom. Bolts tightened up. I haven't talked them as yet. I'll do that in a bit. So you got both cylinders. There we are, sorted. Just the fact that I've got to this is a little win for me. As I say, I've got no mechanical knowledge. But this little baby here, as I say, I found all of the uh, the repair manual for it. So, uh, proven invaluable. I'm going to go and have a celebratory pasty for lunch. And I'm going to go and come back afterwards and carry on. Okay, everyone, just come to a little bit of an impasse here. Um, I've realised that my torque wrench, big bugger there, doesn't go down to a low enough torque to actually torque the end caps on my con rods. So I've just ordered a new one. Uh, unfortunately, I've rung around all of the different shops locally to me. Nobody's got one in stock, won't get one until next week. So I've gone to 
Amazon where you can obviously get bloody anything and everything. And one is coming up for me in the morning. So what I've done in the meantime, as per the manual, I've in I've oiled up all of the tappets. And they're all up in here now. I've oiled everything regarding the cam. I think that's the cam, isn't it? Yeah, the cam. And uh, yeah, so basically I've just installed this to make sure it fits nice and tidy. Little mark which is on the the gear wheel on the cam has got to line up with the one on the, the crank. Um, once I've got that in, I'm, like I say, I'm at an impasse until tomorrow basically, until this uh, uh, smaller range torque wrench comes in. I can torque these bits up and then uh, I put the sump on and we're hopefully not far off then. But yeah, have to wait till tomorrow. Okay, so I'm back. It's the day after my torque wrench has arrived. This year's. I've just torqued up the caps for the conrods, and they go at 15 newton meters as per the manual. So I've installed a new O-ring in that hole, as stated in the manual. I'm going to put a tiny amount of um, gasket sealant around here, and then I've got new gasket from my pack to sit on here, and then the next thing. Put a little bit of oil on the teeth of this cog. This is for the oil pump. I'll put a little bit more oil in amongst you. And it's a case of mating that to that and torquing it down. As per the uh, manual here, I've done all this bit. And here's where it tells you the uh, the ones that you, sh you should do in a certain order for tightening on the sump and what the torque settings are so that's my next move so uh, I'll try and set up a camera and see what bits I'm going to capture okay so as you can probably hear shock or it started raining again that's the story of the bloody month that is or six months um, okay so I've just used a bit of my what's this Loctite blue silicon gasket maker just to go around there that's going to hold the gasket I've used my assembly lube, the Lucas assembly lube. I've just lubed up this part of the crank. I've put normal engine oil all around all of the teeth here. Inside the sump, I've used the assembly lube all inside where the surface is going to mate. Normal engine oil around this cog. Normal engine oil there, that's the receptacle for the camshaft so I'm just gonna get the gasket out for the sump now stick her on and hopefully away we go Pull this out without like pulling all of the others out now. Just see, I don't make these things easy. Can't feel like it can grip it properly. Here she comes. Sure you go the right way around. You know that it's the right way around there because where I put the O-ring in, that's where that tallies up. You can't go wrong. Looks alright, so here we go. Just didn't put your anal on this, so I'll just turn it right around. I don't know if you need to do this or not, but I'm just gonna turn it so my 
little dots line up on the cam and the gear chest of the crank. This is the oil seal at the bottom of the PTO. I put a little bit of oil in it to install it. Put the oil around it there now. Right, here we go. She is seated. She's seated on there nicely. I will now go about as per the manual, so it gives you the, the pattern on which way to install the bolts and you know the, the order that you need to tighten them. These all get tightened down to 17 newton meters of torque. So I'm going to get into that now. Okay, she didn't realize I hadn't pressed start when I started uh, talking these up. So all of them are to 17 newton meters, and you know, it's, the pattern goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, and number nine's in the bottom there. Next thing I've got to do, just sit down. Makes it a bit difficult now because the uh, oil drain pipe for the sump is here, so I'm having to just sit it on a block. I've just got to install the new gasket and the whatever you want to call it. Basically, that's where the uh, oil filter screws onto the side. So that's my next job. Okay, so that is the receiver or whatever you want to call it for the oil filter on. That's talked up as well. So next stage is to put the gaskets on and put the cylinder heads on. But I'm going to look at doing that tomorrow. I think uh, it's the bank holiday weekend at the minute. I know it's raining, but I better spend a bit of time with my uh, my family. So that's the next bit I'm at. So yeah, we're not too far away. Okay, morning all. I hadn't intended on doing anything to my. Uh, engine today i came out here to just sharpen my chainsaw but i thought bollocks to it i'll have a crack while i'm here so i've just put cylinder head one on and i got two to go um i'll quickly just go over what i've actually done and then what i'll probably do is just take a couple of photos as i go about the stages of doing this so basically um i put the cylinder head on brand new gasket in there these bolts and then the two that are internal get torqued to 19 mil. Um, I then put the rocker arms on the top. Um, like assembled all of this malarkey here. Put the push rods in onto the top of the tappets. Um, installed the rocker arms on the top. Um, the what would you call these bits the posts effectively you could say yeah i suppose you could say that they're the posts they get um talk to 11 newton meters when they're in on the top and then i set the valve clearances on this one as well it's all in the manual here about how to do the valve clearances um so once the valve clearances were done everything got tightened up i put a new gasket on for this top cover um and then i just put these two bolts in as well i've had to make two there's, there was no gaskets for these in the kits because when the, the these studs came off there's like a little bit of i'd say it looks like a graphite gasket so all i've done is a little bit of um cardboard basically i've just cut some cardboard out so they can seat in there these are supposed to be tightened to three newton meters i haven't got a torque meter that 
goes that low so I've just done a a decent hand tight basically um, all my other faces have been cleaned off so yeah I'm going to have a go at doing cylinder 2 now and as I say I'll just take a couple of photos stills all the way through and uh, we're not far away ok so i put a little bit of blue gasket maker on there as I say, just to hold it Nicely, just going to put a bit of anti seize on the bolts here, ready for them to go in. Just to um, get mine a couple of threads so it basically just holds it there. It's just basically held in out. Get off there. Get the right socket now. That's the wrong bloody socket. So I'm after 10 mil. Do 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 do. No, not. That's all right. Tell me. I think it's 12 mil. Yeah, it's a 12 mil for these ones. So again, these go to 19, that's one nine, 19, um, Newton meters. And there is an order to do them in as well. So we start with this one. First, second, third, fourth. So it's the four bolts holding the cylinder head in now and they're torqued to 19mm. I'm going to go about making up the rocker arms now and I'll install those and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Okay, so my rocker arms might be different to yours, but basically all it is, you've got a bolt which has got a nut on the top of it. That goes through this, that's one cast piece there. You can see it, that just fits in the middle here and that's how it rocks so all I'm going to do is sit that in there I should say these rods put that there, rods here they go down onto the top of the tappets the steel one there's an aluminium one and a steel one the steel one has to has to go on the exhaust side if it doesn't there's a chance it could buckle um, so that's my steel one that's my aluminium one all I'm going to do is put that on there now, tighten it down and just line it up so the top of the 
the rod is on there now if I get this right that is going to be doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah so this this stud on the top gets torqued to 11 newton meters that keeps this night and tight and then all you've got to do is bring the cylinder to top dead center and then with a feeler gauge you're looking what your gap is here it needs to be nice and snug I need to tighten this one up it needs to be decimal zero zero six of an inch or decimal one three millimeters so this is a little bit loose here and all I'm going to be doing is loosening off this nut there's a um, screw on the inside then which has got an allen key or hex head whatever you want to call it um, socket and you just tighten it up just until you've got the right amount of play that you need and then you keep hold of the um, the nut with a uh, spanner keep your allen key in there so you keep your allen key at the same spot it needs to be tighten up that nut and that gets torqued to three newton meters um, no seven sorry that goes to seven newton meters um, and then these are done so that's what I'm going to do now okay so my kids have just come home and I was showing them what I was doing and I was carrying on and I just realized that I haven't recorded any of it so Cylinder number two is back on, starter motor is back on and I'm going to go ahead and carry on mounting the, I don't know what the hell they're called, the little bits that sort of help with the starting uh, and whatnot. So these little posts here are where they mount on to, so I'm going to get on with that. Okay, so quick one now, I haven't taken bloody photos, apologies. Um... I'm just head down arse up trying to get this done now. I can't remember if I on the last clip I had installed this or not, but the starter motor is back on. I've put these back on. They've got their air gaps as this is supposed to be. It's 0.12 millimeters is the gap between there and the magnet on the flywheel. I've installed all of the shields necessary. I've got all of the bits for the governor linkage on here now. The top manifold is on. These have been torqued for the top manifold to 16 newton meters. There's new gaskets in there as well. These ones here have been done to, I think it was seven. Don't hold me to that. Ones underneath that hold the bracket for the governor manifold, they've been done to 17 newton meters. Um, so yeah, next thing is to actually put the carb on itself. But that'll be a job for tomorrow because the missus has just shouted me for my dinner. So I'm heading in for dinner. I very much doubt I'll be able to get back out again. Morning all. Quick little one now. Um, I haven't got long today. Sunshine and I'm back in work tomorrow. So my main focus is going to be cutting the grass out there today. That's going to be done using my mum's lawnmower. Um, just quick update on what I did yesterday. I fitted all of the... Um, the brackets etc regarding the governor so that piece in there is attached to the sump and that controls the governor inside this piece here clamps underneath the cylinders with four bolts um, there's a small spring there which is attached to the the governor which is on the sump and that ends up attaching to a, a piece of the bracket here there's, if I can see it in there, that just behind there, there's a little spring. Basically, before you fit this bracket, you've got to get that spring attached to this part of the governor before you can attach it, otherwise you're never going to get it. And then also, also this spring and control arm, which goes up for the carb, that's got to be in place and kept to the side, otherwise you're not going to get it on. I've then fitted the manifold at the top for the intakes, and I've loosely fitted the carb. So the next part for me now is, I think, is for me to actually fit it to the engine, uh, uh, the mower, sorry. And once it's on the mower, I can get all of the, the control cables, etc., all attached here. And then I can fit the air box. And then it's a case of just trying to get everything back together. Chuck a bit of oil in it. Fingers crossed that I can... Uh, reattach the wire as it should be and it's a case of trying to turn her over then um yeah so as i say 
Um, I might not get back to this now for another four or five days. I'm back in as of tomorrow on a work cycle for four days, so uh, we'll wait and see.